The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Welcome back to Spain, everybody. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with Dave Nicholson. We are live at the FIDA in Barcelona covering MWC 23, day four. We've been talking about you know, 5G all week. We're going to talk about it some more. Jillian Kaplan is here. She's the head of global telecom thought leadership at Dell Technologies. And we're pleased to have Meg Knopf, who's the vice president for digital platform engineering at T-Mobile. Ladies, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, right. thank you. All right, Meg, explain, can you explain 5G and Edge to folks that may not be familiar with it? Give us the 101 on 5G and Edge. Sure, I'd be happy to. So, at T-Mobile, we want businesses to be able to focus on their business outcomes and not have to stress about network technology. Um, so, we're, we're here to, to handle the networking um, behind the scenes for you to achieve your business goals. The, the main way to think about 5G is speed, reduced latency, and heightened security. And you can apply that to so many different business goals and, and objectives. Um, you know, some of the use cases that get touted out the most are in the retail and manufacturing sen um, sectors with, um, with sensors, and with control of inventory and, and things of that nature. Um, but it can be applied to pretty much any industry um, because who doesn't need more, <laughs> more speed um, and lower latency? Yeah, and reliability, right? I mean, that's what exactly. you, you're, you're going to have there. So it's, it's not like it's nef necessarily going to, you know, you think about 5G and these private networks, right? I mean, it's not going to, oh, maybe it is going to eat into, there's a Venn there, I know, but it's not going to replace wireless, right? I mean, it's new use cases. Yeah. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, they definitely coexist, right? And, and Meg touched a little bit on like all the use cases that are coming to be, but as we look at 5G, it's really the, we call it like the enterprise G, right? It's where the enterprise is going to be able to see changes in their business and the way that they do things. And for them, it's going to be about reducing costs and heightening ROI and safety too, right? Like being able to automate manufacturing facilities where you don't have workers like, you know, getting hit by various pieces of equipment and you can take them out of harm's way and put robots in their place and having them really work in an autonomous situation is going to be super, super key. And 5G is just the, it's the backbone of all future technologies if you look at it. We have to have a network like that in order to build things like AI and ML, and we talk about VR and the metaverse. You have to have a super reliable network with, that can handle the amount of devices that we're putting out today, right? So, extremely but, important. Where, where, from T-Mobile's perspective, I mean, we hear a lot about, oh, we spend a lot on CapEx, we know that, you know, trillion and a half over the next seven years going into 5G infrastructure. We heard in the early keynotes at MWC, we heard the call to you know, tax the over the top vendors. We heard the OTT, Netflix shot back and said, why don't you help us pay for the content that we're creating? You know, but, okay, so I get that. But telcos have a great business. Where's T-Mobile stand on future revenue opportunities? Are you looking to get more data and monetize that data? Are you looking to do things like partner with Dell to do you know, 5G networks, where are the opportunities for T-Mobile? I think it's more, as Jillian said, it's the opportunities for each business, and it's unique to those businesses. So we're, we're not in it just for ourselves, we're in it to help others achieve their business goals and to do more with all of the, um, the new capabilities that this network provides. Yeah, I mean, I like that answer because, again, listening to some of the CEOs of the large telcos, it was like, hmm, What's in it for me as the, as the customer or the business? I didn't hear enough of that, and at least in the early keynotes. I'm hearing it more you know, as the show goes on, but I don't know, Dave, what, what do you think about what, you're, what you've heard at the, the event? Well, I'm curious from T-Mobile's perspective, um, when, you know, when a consumer thinks about 5G, we think of voice, text, and data. And if we think about the 5G network mm -hmm. that you already have in place, I'm curious if you can share this kind of information what, what, what percentage of that's being utilized now? How much is available for the, for the, you know, for the enterprise G 
um, that we're talking about. And maybe, you know, in five years in the future, do you, have, do you have like a projected mix of consumer, you know, consumer use versus all of these back office, call them processes that a consumer's not aware of, but you know, the factory floor being connected via 5G, um, that, that frontier as it emerges. Where are we now and what are you, what are you looking towards? Does, it, does that make sense, kind of the mix question? Hand over the business plan. <laughs> yeah, what's the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I I want numbers, Meg, numbers. <laughs> wow, um, I'm probably actually not the right person to speak to that. Um, but as you know, T-Mobile has the largest 5G network in North America, um, and we're, um, we just say bring it, right? Let, let's so you got it. room. You got room. You got yeah. room for Jillian stuff. Yeah, but we let's can solve build business so problems many together. Private five G networks, right? Like there's, it, I would say, like the opportunities are there. There's not, there's not a limit, right? Because as we build out these private networks, right? We're not on a public network when we're talking about like connecting these massive factories or connecting like a retail store to you in your house to be able to basically continue to try on the clothes remotely, something like that. It's, it's limitless and okay, what we so, can so build. They're, so they're related, but they're not necessarily mutually exclusive in the sense that what you're doing in the factory example is going to interfere with my ability to get my data through T-Mobile. No, no. These are, no, these I, are separated. Yeah, okay. yeah, as we build out these private networks and these private facilities. And there are so many applications in the consumer space that haven't even been realized yet. Like when we think about 4G, when 4G launched, there were no applications that needed 4G to run on our cell phones, right? But then the engineers got to work, right? And we ended up with Uber and Instagram Stories and all these applications that require 4G to launch. And that's what's going to happen with 5G too, is like as the network continues to get built in the consumer space as well as the enterprise space, there's going to be new applications realized on this is all the stuff that we can do with this amazing network and look how many more devices and look how fast, how much faster it is and the lower latency and the higher bandwidth and you know, what we can really build. And I think what we're seeing at this show compared to last year is this stuff actually in practice. There was a lot of talk last year like about, oh, this is what we can build, but now we're building it. And I think that's really key to show that companies like T-Mobile can help the enterprise in this space with cooperation, right? Like we're not just talking about it now, we're actually putting it into So how's practice. it work? If I put in a private network, what do you do? You slice out a piece of the network and charge me for it, and then I get that as part of my private network? How does it actually work for the customer? <laughs> you want to take so that I one? was going to say, there are, yeah, you can do a network slice, you can actually physically build a private network, right? It it, there's so many different ways to, to engineer it. Um, so I think you, you can do it either way, basically. There's we just, we don't want it to be scary, right? Yep. So it's, it starts with, having a conversation about the business challenges that you're facing, and then backing it into the technology and letting the technology power those solutions. Um, but we don't want it to be scary for people because there's so much buzz around 5G, around edge, and it can be overwhelming and you can feel like you need a, a PhD in engineering to have a conversation. And we, do, we just want to, to kind of simplify things and, and talk in your language, not in our language. We'll figure out the tech behind the scenes, just tell us what problems we can solve together. And so many non-technical companies are having to transform, right? Like, like retail, like manufacturing, that haven't had to be tech companies before, but together with T-Mobile and Dell, we can help enable that and, and make it not scary, like Meg said. Right, so you come into my factory, I say, okay, look around. <laughs> I got all these people there and they're making hoses and they're putting it physically putting them together and we go and we have to take a physical measurement as to, you know, is it right? And because if we don't do that, then we have to rework it. Okay, now, th that's a problem. Okay, can you help me digitize that business? I need a network to do that. I'm going to put in some robots to do that. This is, I mean, I'm making this up, but this has got to be a common use case, right? So. Yeah. So how do you simplify that for, for, the, for the business owner? So we start with what we can provide, and then in some cases you need additional solution providers. You might need a robotics company, you might mm -hmm. need a sensor company, um, but we have those contacts to bring that together for you so that you don't have to be the expert in all those things. And, and what do I do with all the data that I'm collecting? Because you know, I'm not really a data expert maybe, you know, I'm good at putting hoses together, but, but 
What's the data <laughs> layer? <laughs> look it's like a hose here. business. It's a hose business. Yeah. 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 Great We're business. Back to right the hoses there. again. <laughs> There's a lot of different things you can do with it, right? You can collect it in a database. You can send it up to a cloud. You can, you know, use an edge device. It, it, it depends how we build the network. Can you guys help me do that? Can you sure. Guys, yeah, help yeah. me figure that out. Should yeah. I put it in the cloud? Should I? Use this database or that database, what kind of and skills do I need? And it depends on the size of the network, right? And the size of the business. Like, you know, there's very simple, We this doesn't, you don't have to be a massive manufacturer in order to install this stuff. No, right? I'm asking small business questions. Yeah. Right? I might not have this giant IT team. Yeah. I, I might not have somebody who knows how to do ETL yeah. and DBA. Exactly, and, and we can talk to you too about what data matters, right? And we can together talk about um, what, data might be the most valuable to you. We can talk to you about how we use data. Um, but again, simplifying it down and making it personal to your business. Your point about scary is interesting because no one, no one has mentioned that until you mm. did. In four days, three, four days. Somebody says, let's do a private 5G network. That sounds like you're offering, you know, it's like, hey, you know what we should do, Dave? We'll build you a cruise ship. It's like, I don't need a cruise ship. I just want to go bass fishing. <laughs> right, right, right. right. But, but in fact, these things are scalable in the sense that it can be scaled down from the trillions of dollars of infrastructure investment. Yeah, yeah it needs to be focused on your outcome, right? And not on the tech. Well, I was at the Dell booth. I saw this little private network. It was about this big. I'm like, how much is that? I, I want one of those. The little, <laughs> that, the, I am not the right person. The, the little, the little black one. Yes, and I wanted one I of those too. And they had a little I don't know case what it is. <laughs> to carry it around. I'm like, right. I could fit in my business. You. The cube right. could use that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything yeah. that could go in a pelican case, I want. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's true. <laughs> like it it's it's so incredibly important. Like you said, to focus on on outcomes, right? Not just tech for the sake of tech. What's the problem? Let's solve the problem together and then you're getting the outcome you want, you'll know what data you need. If you know what the problem is, you're like, okay, this is the data I need to know if this problem is solved So or it not. sounds like 2022 was the year of talking about it. Mm -hmm. 2023, I'm, I'm inferring, is the year of seeing it. Yep. And, and 2024 is going to be the year of doing it? I think we're doing it now. We're doing it okay, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're definitely doing it now. Right. So I, I don't, I see, a, I see a lot of this stuff being put into place and a lot more innovation and a lot more working together and, Meg mentioned working with other partners. It's this has to, no one's going to do this alone. You've got to like, you know, Dell especially. We're focused on open and making sure that you know we have the right software partners. We're bringing in smaller players, right? Like ISVs too, as well as as well as like the big software guys. Incredibly, incredibly important. The sensor companies, whatever we need, you've got to be able to solve your customer's issue which in this case, we're looking to help the enterprise together to transform their space, and Dell knows a little bit about the enterprise, so. So if we're there in 2023, then I assume 2024 will be the year that each of your companies sets up a dedicated vertical to address the hose manufacturing market. Uh, the hose manufacturing. <laughs> Further segmentation is a hallmark, <laughs> is usually a hallmark of, a, of, of the maturity of, of an industry. I got a lead for you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and that's one thing we've done at Dell too. We built like this use case directory to help the service providers understand what, not just say like, oh, you can, you can help manufacturers. Yeah, but how? What are the use cases to do that? And we worked with a research firm to figure out like, you know, these are the most mature, these are the best ROIs, like to have really help hone in on exactly what we can deploy for 5G and edge solutions that make the most sense, not only for service providers, right, but also for the enterprises. Where do you guys want to see this partnership go? I mean, give us the vision. To infinity and beyond, to 5G, <laughs> to 5G and beyond. I love it. It's continuation. <laughs> I, I love that we're partnering together. It's incredibly important to the future of the business. Good deal. Yeah, to bring the strengths of both together and like Jillian said, other partners in the ecosystem. This is, it, it has to be approached from a partnership perspective, but focused on outcomes. Yep. To 5G and beyond, I love it. 5G and beyond. Folks, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks Appreciate for having the insights. Thank you. All right, Dave Vellante for Dave Nicholson. Keep it right there, you're watching theCUBE. Go to siliconangle.com, John Furrier's banging out all the news, thecube.net has all the videos. We're live at the FIDA in Barcelona, MWC 23, we'll be right back.